Good morning, Diane here with my knitting podcast. Yes, I'm going to call it a knitting podcast. I usually don't. I call it my retirement vlog because it's a video of things I do in retirement, but today is all knitting, so I'm going to call it a knitting podcast. It's August 2019. I live in New England. It's very warm, and I don't have any air conditioning on yet today. I like to be conservative and only put it on when I get really warm. I think I'm starting to get really warm, but I also wanted to forego the noise. So as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to turn it on. Okay, I'm going to get right into the knitting. This is going to be kind of short because there's not a lot of things that I've finished. But I have one, I have two, two and almost three finished objects. So let's go with that. In my last video, I showed you these vanilla socks. They were made from fingering yarn from a homespun house. I think the colorway is barefoot in the park. It's vanilla socks, but what I used for the heel was uh, Hermione's Everyday Socks, which is a free pattern on Ravelry because it does an eye of partridge heel. I just like the way that eye of partridge heel looks. So I used that this time with my vanilla sock. One done. Now my next one is a bigger item. I finished a sweater. I finished my Weekender by uh, Andrea Maori. Here's the pattern. That's the nice picture of the pattern. This is my pattern after I'm done with it. The paper version, which is all mocked up, <laughs> folded. It's got a million. But I like to keep this one because it's the notes. It tells me what I do. Any adjustments I've made, any changes, because I did change it a little. Now, using my advanced technology here, I am going to, let's see, which is the back, which is the front. This is the front, okay. My advanced technology of moving back the tripod because I do not have a remote control on my camera. Here's my Weekender. It fits great. I'm not putting it on because it's in the 90s today. Um, sleeves are great. Uh, it came together really quickly. And uh, I'll show you some close-ups now. Again, advanced technology. What I did here is I knitted size large, not extra. I knitted size large, but I followed the instructions for medium for this um, neckline because I don't like it to open, especially in the winter. So you see, it'll go right to here and not show a bra strap or anything. So I'm very happy with this. I used, let's see, what yarn did I use? I used Patton's, Patton, Patton's Classic Worsted. It was on special at Michael's when I got it. Um, it was uh, clearance. So I got, the reason I have so much left over is because I started with a real lot. I started with eight skeins. I only used less than six because here are two full ones left over and this is what I've had left over from six. Um, and that's without having to fabric, you know, use my um, swatch into the sweater. I like it. I would do it again, knit it again. So this turned out to be very economical because that being on clearance and only using six skeins, I think it was probably um, maybe 350 a skein. And I use six, so let's call it four, twenty-four dollars, but less. Okay, with I don't know if they charge tax on yarn, but anyway, this is finished object. Yay! I love the show, the shoulder detail. I would like to make one inside out because you make this, you knit it in the round, doing stockinette, but then you turn it inside out so that the garter is the body. I would like to do it opposite next time because I'm not a real big fan of goddess stitch, although I like this sweater and I like the way it turned out. Okay, those are two finished objects. The other thing, it's 99.5% um, done. I finished the, again, Angela Maori 
I did the shift cowl. All right, this is the bottom. The shift cowl. I ju it just finished blocking. So here it is. I love knitting this. I never did mosaic knitting before. Here's some close-ups. Oh, wait a minute. It might get too dark. Let's do it this way. Some close-ups of the design. It's just slip stitches. It's so easy. I didn't know if I'd be able to do it, but the, the directions are great. So now that it's in this... Okay, I had it folded so I'd know which way it has to go. Okay, you have to take the two edges oh darn I guess it's this way you take the two edges that are not there we go we take these two edges so you have a you have this shape and which is sew this together um, I'm thinking I'm gonna turn it inside out like this I'm going to turn it inside out and crochet it together I'm much better at crocheting I crocheted for years before I learned to knit well, before I started to learn to knit, because I can't say I really knit that well yet. So I'm going to stitch this together, and then there's the cowl. So it's the shift cowl. Again, Angela Maury, where's that pattern so I can show you what it looks like finished? See, this is what it looks like stitched together. And there it is when she's wearing it. Pretty cute. And nice and warm. I used three skeins of from my local yarn shop, three bags full in Cumberland, Rhode Island. I live in Rhode Island. We're lucky enough to have plenty, plenty of local yarn shops around. And everybody offers different things, so it's really nice to go around and shop. Um, Roberta, the owner, uh, suggested painted sky, painted sky um, yarn. And I, it is actually um, worsted weight, I would say, because it has the number four. You know that? Four. It tells you what size needles. So I use these in the three colors uh, Lime Twist, Tropical Flame, and Malted Barley. Now it doesn't matter which, in this pattern, you start off using maybe these two together and then it switches to these two, then it might do these two. You're always changing colors, so just get three colors that you think look, look, look good together. This is how much I have left over from the three skeins. Um, I'd make another one, especially for gift giving. I'm thinking it might be a nice Christmas gift. We'll see. It didn't take very long to make it. So those are my three objects that are just about finished. Two finished, one going to be finished like as soon as I turn on the air conditioning and, and close that thing out. Um, the last thing I have, oh, off, um, on the needles. This is on the needles. I'm actually making another Hermione, the Hermione Everyday Sock. Here's one done. So I guess you could say I have a hoe, a half object. Here's the first one, not blocked yet. Let me show you, see if I can show you this Eye of Potchage Heel. I think it's so nice. Does that show up? There it is. Maybe I should show it to you this way. Very nice heel. I like this. This is a nice, this is a real easy. See, I didn't do the pattern in the other one. I just made a vanilla sock, but I did the pattern in this one, which is really easy to remember. So I'm this far going on my second one. And what I do when I make socks, my favorite way is to use, I love chow gu, and these are size one, US size one, and I use the nine inch. And I just go round and round and round. It's not uncomfortable. I don't have large hands, I don't have small hands. I think I have medium sized hands, so it's real easy for me to maneuver this. The only thing is I have a tendency to push the needle with this finger, so I usually wear a little um, quilter, quilting, you can buy these little patches for your finger for needle, um, sort of like um, sticky thimbles. I'll use that after a while because after a night of knitting with um, these needles, they're very sharp. I make holes in my fingers and that's painful. So um, let me show you a picture of the pattern. So if you want to look for it on Ravelry, I'm using um, some yarn that I got in Knit Crate, I used to 
buy stuff from Knit Crate every month. I had a subscription. I've stopped because I wasn't using it up quick enough and I didn't want to just stockpile yarn that I didn't know what I might do with. Okay, it's a fingering weight called Peachy Queen from Euro Yarns. Oops. <laughs> Euro Yarn Peachy Queen. It's a sugared sock, they call it. 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 10% stellina. 399 yards per skein. So I can get another pair of socks out of this because I got a pair of socks out of one skein. Well, I know I will because I weighed the ball and I know I have enough to get two socks from one skein. Generally, I guess rule of thumb is if it's 100 grams, you can get both your socks. Okay, I told you I'd show you the pattern, the picture of the pattern. It's very nice. I, many, many, many people have um, knit this sock. Um, it's very popular. Hermione's Everyday Socks. There's the picture. And I think, yeah, they show a picture of that partridge heel. Yeah. I like it very much. I like the pattern. It's easy to memorize. I can still do it and watch television. Watch a movie or watch whatever I'm binge watching. Right now I'm binge watching CBS's Elementary with Johnny Lee Miller as Sherlock Holmes and Lucy Liu as Watson. I used to watch it years ago and I kind of got away from it so now I'm just binge watching it so that I'll see the whole series because I think it ended with season seven in th this season. Okay. The, the only other thing I have to show today is what I'm going to put on my needles. I want to cast this on, but I want to get that sock done, I think. I'm going to get that sock done. I have another pair of socks that are on the needles, but they're not anything to show yet. They're very small. It's only like this much done, and they're kind of like house socks. They're not, I don't think they'll fit unless you wear them with boots, so I'll show those next time. I have some yarn here that I got at the Mermaid's Pearl in Wickford, Rhode Island. Um, I was shopping the night that Christy Glass was there. We went to see Christy Glass and see her um, her trunk show. She has tons of things that she's knitted by um, Boylan Knitworks, which is, we all know that is. <laughs> no, I'm not remembering her name. Hang on, it's got to be in my pattern. We know her name. Hang on. Um... Okay, I'll put it on the screen because I can't think of her name. She's, she is Caitlin Hunter. Caitlin Hunter, that's it. Okay, my next sweater will be, I know it says Tegna, but I'm hearing a lot of people pronounce it Tegna. I think it might be a city or something. I'm going to look that up. Um, that's my next sweater. I got the pattern at the, um, at the Mermaid's Pearl. And also, you guys... If you're new to knitting, if you buy a nice hot copy pattern like this, you have to know that, oh, if you want to get the Ravelry download and have it on your, um, insta in your computer, there's a Ravelry download code right underneath that, um, box. Um, I guess it's a scratch it off and then you'll get the pattern online too so you can print out other copies because that's what I like to do. I like to have a hot copy nice and then have paper copy that I can rip up, lose, um, right all over. Not rip up but it gets torn because you the dog steps on it or you fold it up too many times. You understand. So the Tanya is my next um, sweater. I'm looking forward to um, this Farmer's Daughter's Fiber that I got at Mermaid's Pearl. It's called Squish Fingering. 100% Merino, Superwash Merino. It's 438 yards or 100 grams. 100 grams. This color is Minioki. I believe that's a town or a city. In Montana maybe because this is made in Montana and here's the color and actually from what I'm looking at now on my screen on the monitor here this color looks right and actually I went around and around and around the shop and I was between this and something else and I was leaning towards this Christy Christy Glass came over and said what are you making and I showed her and she said oh this definitely this so I went with it but if you look at this, hmm, look at the picture. How close is that to this? 
I unintentionally picked the same. I'm no, I want to say unintentionally. Well, yeah, it was unintentional, but it must have been subconscious that I purchased something that looks exactly like the sample. Do we all do that? Well, we know we like the sample, so that's probably why we. Go. I just went with this, so I'm very anxious to to um, cast this on. I have it in a little bag I bought at Mermaid's Pearl that night because I just like cheap bags. Have you any wool? But I think what I'm going to do is take this fabric and fabricate a different type of, um, you know I quilt. Well if you've seen my other videos I also make cards and I quilt and I machine embroider so my videos are always usually varied so I'd like to take this fabric and quilt it and make it into a more of a, a zip up type of um, knitting bag. All the things I'd like to do, huh? But I'm hoping to get to it. Um, because I am retired and I don't have a part-time job. My husband's retired and he has two jobs, two part-time jobs. I don't want to have a job. Although I'll do things here and there that'll work, but well, that's a long story. Anyway, I guess that's it for today. That's what I've been up to as far as knitting. I'm going to post this as a knitting podcast. We'll see what happens with that. Thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate every one of you who's uh, subscribed to my videos. And hopefully you enjoy them. Or some of them anyway. So you can see. Well, you can't. I'm usually downstairs in my... Um, quilting room, sewing room, but today I'm upstairs because the focus of today is going to be the upstairs room. And I'm going to crash, that's my window. This is my other crafting room upstairs. This is my table for stamping. And you can see straight ahead here is a wall of my stamps. Stamps, punches, things like that, you can see. I have all my punches and different stamp sets and paper, etc. So that's the plan to get to stamping today. I've been straightening out this room because I haven't given it a lot of attention of late. And that's only because it's summer. Oh, look at this. I have to let this on Zoom. Don't want that up of my classes yeah so um yep getting pretty warm time for me to go turn on the air say goodbye and you guys have a great day and have fun with whatever crafts you're up to today i'm trying to find my camera button bye bye now